What a match we've got in prospect here. Real clash of styles. Sean Chipperfield, 2016 world champion. One of the quickest players on the circuit. Against Brian Halcrow, who's had a pretty difficult 2021 Pro Series season. But suddenly, at the moment he needed it most, pulled out an amazing 8-7 victory over Chris Day in the final qualifying round yesterday to book his place on this televised stages. Good friend of yours, of course, Sean, Chris Day. I imagine a bit disappointed to lose that one. I have spoken to him since, actually. Uh, he was 7-5 in front, Chris. Um, apparently, I mean, Brian's played well from 7-5, but he did have a big slice of fortune at 7-6. Seven, seven, um, went for a double, ended up getting a treble off of another ball, apparently. But... Uh, uh, and then took out a very good finish in the decider. So it's a bit disappointing for my practice partner, Chris, but um, I'm sure Brian deserved the win and he'll give us a good game here. Yeah, and he's very excited. I was talking to him outside when he arrived this morning, really looking forward to this. And you heard in his pre-match interview saying how excited he was, as we all are, game getting this kind of exposure over the Christmas period. Sean hit a fantastic break here, um, really middled it. The white came straight back. He's going to play safe here. Just yeah. had that yellow and red on the left-hand side cushion that he couldn't quite get to grips with working out, so I would still say yellow's a favourite from here. Yeah, I think for the most part we won't see Sean get into too much of a tactical game. He's going to be a lot better if we have a fast-flowing game. It's Brian that's going to prefer the, the slower, more tactical approach. Quite a hard match to call, because on paper you'd say... Sean is a strong favourite. He's number seven seed and is ranked 23 places above Brian in the Pro Series rankings. But you know, Brian's one of those players. He can just kind of hang on in there. He could pull out a shot. He's definitely capable of winning the match. And uh, he's got a lot of clever shots in his armoury, is Brian. So we might get to see some of those if, if the opportunity arises. Very good pot there from Sean. He'll need another one. Yeah, that's a good sign for supporters of Sean Chipfield once he starts knocking in balls like that and builds some confidence up. It's going to be a tricky... If he's playing the yellow to the middle now and then the one along the cushion, he's, he's probably going to have to land straight and just push through. Okay. Yeah, he's not playing it that way. He's not happy with that at all. Yeah, I didn't want to just play the one up the cushion because it was hard, as you say, to get position, but he's now got some work to do. He needs to land right on the left-hand side cushion here if he can. Oh, he's under hit it. Wasn't a natural angle. No, it, it was trying to force an angle, kind of to stun into it and try and get enough pace. It's a pretty quick table, but that was a tough ask still. So here's Brian's chance to get get going. This is the. He might not go yet. Might play a safety first, but uh, this is what you'd really like to get yourself going. He's, he's a strong favourite from here for this frame. Yeah, big advantage having several balls on the table when your opponent's down to the last one. And this is exactly what Brian needs to get started. As you say, he doesn't have to rush into anything, can just bide his time. He has left the one cushion. This, this yellow could go close to the top right corner here. The two players, you'd say it, the good start is more important for Brian. He hasn't had the same exposure out of this main arena. We've seen a lot of Sean recently out here. Oh, well, bad you, effort. He called it. Went close to the top right. So th this is the chance that Brian's been waiting for and the one he really needs to take. He couldn't really ask for a more presentable first visit opportunity to win your first frame of the match. That wasn't a great safety from Brian, I'm sure he'll say the same, just to leave a straightforward one cushion escape there and I thought he would have come up with something a little bit better, but he's put himself under a bit of pressure here as well. Yeah, I, mean, I think one thing it'll be interesting to see how he copes with is, is playing out in this main arena and the time clock. He's not naturally anywhere near as quick a player as Sean. He kind of can play this with a bit of safety in mind, I think, just drop it through a bit. No, he's just played a full on safety. He's waiting. It's a dangerous game. Yeah, you, you don't want to allow Sean too many chances. Do you think he played this as a safety? I think he played he the safety here. Her? I don't think he's gone for that. He's definitely playing as a shot to nothing if, if 
as you say, knew the white was hiding behind that red. Not difficult making contact, but anything short of potting it is likely to leave a good opportunity. And Brian doesn't want to be letting Sean off the hook and letting him back to the table too much. Really needs these to go. And he does. You can see he's just trying to settle himself down, Brian. His body language is saying he's sort of hoping he gets these rather than being confident he's going to get them. That's just what I see. It's yeah, a good first I, shot. I agree with that. I think it's hard not to be very hyped up, isn't it? Like This is a big tournament. He hasn't had many big matches on this arena. You, you just want to give a good account of yourself. Sometimes you almost try too hard at the beginning. You can see he looks a lot more comfortable now he's played that first shot. because That was a, that was a little tester, so he's actually... You can just see his confidence grow with, with that shot going in. Now, if this, uh, he's got to play the lower one of the two, I think, as we look. I, th I don't know if the other one goes to the top right. If not, he's got to play on it to the, probably to the top left. I don't think he can get back out to the middle. Yeah, he's playing the high one for that reason. It's not perfect control of the cue ball so far. That's a good shot. Yeah, settling down a lot. Absolutely perfect on the ball to the left centre. The eight ball hanging invitingly. Well, it took him a couple of opportunities to get into it, but that eight ball is safely down. That's just what Brian wanted, to settle himself into the match. Like you said, I think it's definitely more important for Brian to get the good start. Um, and you can just see him relax there as he as he was walking back. It's it's just a big weight off his shoulders. The first frame so important. And you see his profile playing with a seven millimetre tip. You don't see many players play with a cue as small as that. Good pedigree though. Previous UK Tour champion, world doubles finalist, world championship semi finalist. Had a really tough season on the Pro Series though. And he managed to eke out a couple of second round appearances. Had a lot of disappointing first round exits. I wouldn't exactly say he was outplayed, but it was a, a tough school that he came into and just never quite got the season going. He did beat Chris Melling in one of those as a first round. I know they had a 7-6, but um, I think that was Tour 5. Yeah, and I think that was actually his only win of the season. He had he got a buy-in to the last 16 in Event 7 when Dan Gret couldn't make the trip over from Malta. But yeah, I mean, it's strange. If you said you'd only won ma one match all season, you wouldn't have picked Chris Melling to be <laughs> the one you won it over. I didn't that realise that was the only game he won. But that shows what he can do on a good day, so Sean will be aware of that. Very good opportunity. He's given himself with a good break there. Yellows, I think, will be the choice. It's after a spider, I think. Yeah, that's not something you see very often. Extension call. Don't oh. think he can get there with the rest, can he? I think he needs a... Well, maybe... I think I'll be asking for the spider here, sort of very close to this other yellow pot in this. So he's got to be quick he's as well. He's, he's called wise. for an extension, but it, it's not a timeout just because you're asking for equipment. Wow. Oh, goodness me. Oh, that's gone all wrong. And that's the inexperience of playing out in this match arena. The clock isn't paused when you ask for the rest. So still only had the 30 seconds plus the 15 extension. And he asked for the wrong equipment there, I'm afraid. Yellow ball's in play. He just couldn't get to it. You can see he realised, he realised, but a bit too late, and then it was too late to ask for the spider. Yeah, that was a slightly unforgivable mistake, given what a position he was in. Although it's not the best first shot from Sean. That was such a good opportunity, having nicked that first frame, if he could have followed that up with a clearance off his own break. I mean, he's a bit unfortunate that you've got to... The, the, that is the one thing the time doesn't allow with the equipment... Um, you know, in, out, out, in the, out when you've got as much time as you want, he's never missing those because it was just a, it's just the first shot was a little bit tricky to get to. That was it wasn't a difficult shot; you just couldn't reach it. So he'd be disappointed. But it's, <laughs> that is one one thing where you think the time is a bit harsh because it's just an unusual thing to have to happen. But that's what we have to deal with out there. Strange things happen. It's how well you cope with them. Yeah, you see so many more tournaments these days with quicker. T match clocks and shot clocks than you used to. Players have generally got pretty good at adapting. 
the man at the table. I don't think it is much of an adaptation. He normally plays at this kind of pace at the best of times. He's made this exciting, hasn't he? That's it. The ball hard and the white's been travelling everywhere. <laughs> it's fantastic to watch. Not so fantastic for Brian sitting in the chair, though. He knows those should have been his. Frame. Scores levelled up now, one apiece. Sean will be happy with that. I mean, I think even if he'd slipped 2-0 behind, he wouldn't have been so worried, but he's seen his opponent still look a little bit edgy. So as we see there, ranked seven, he's had a, a very good first season on the Pro Series. 2016 World Champion. That year, he was absolutely unplayable at the World Championships. He, just watching that, thinking, if he plays like that normally, he's never going to lose a match. Devastating style. Yeah, that was the year before I started really playing eight ball, but uh, I, know, I know you beat Carl Sutton in the final, and they're obviously very good friends and from the same area of the country, so Third frame. it was nice to... I think it's been dominated by more, more players from the northern half of the country, the World Championship, so it was nice, nice for them. Yeah, they both had great tournaments that year. It's always tough playing someone you know well in a final like that as well. More normal size Q-tip though, Sean, 8.8 .8 mil. I think normal, the normal range is about 8.5 to 9, so I'd say Brian is on the smaller side with a 7 millimetre tip. Yeah, there was a, a trend for a while of people getting smaller and smaller, but I think slightly reversed in the last few years. Especially in these very fast cloths, you don't really need the small tip to get the spin on the ball, so players generally preferring to have a slightly bigger one so you don't put any unwanted side on. So, Brian back to the table, and so far the opportunity is coming reasonably thick and fast for him. It's a tricky, tricky, um, obviously the eight ball doesn't go, that's the first thing we look at. If we are going to go for a finish, so he must have a plan for, if he can land low on that lowest ball on the table there, so play the one along the cushion and land low on the, on the red nearest the bottom cushion, that would be quite a good ball to sort of maybe go into the gap of that, the yellow and the black to open it up. I don't think he can get there here. He wanted to be a bit straighter on this. So maybe he's just sort of playing safe here. Or, or you see he put a lot of right-hand side on the cue ball here. So he's trying to create that angle. And he's just gone a bit too far. This cloth's very fast. Yeah, he's lucky it was a new cloth though, because it caught that quite a long way from the middle of the pocket. and still just wriggled in. If he does go for this cutback, it is naturally opening everything up. And he has got that red at on the top right corner to you know be very unlucky if he didn't land on that but this is a tricky pot if he decides to go for it yeah this is the ball that could open the frame up no i don't know what damage he's done here but i don't think sean can clear up from here particularly so he's probably going to find a safety try and take one of these reds off the table maybe yeah, perhaps just had one eye on the cannon, caught the pot a little bit too thick. I think you have to err on the side of thick there and slow because you don't really want to be sending the eight ball round the table at too much speed. Oh, Sean did go for it. So Brian's got a great chance now just to retake the lead, especially if he's on this first red perfectly by the, uh, the uh, his only slightly tricky ball. Yeah, that would be a real bonus if, if the one nearest the yellow tight, but I think he can get through to it. There you see it. Well, good opportunity to get the second frame on the board. Really can't see where the miss would come from here. Not at all. Well, this could go to the cushion. You've got to just sort of put this. Yeah, that's good. You have to make sure you, you caught the red full there. Does he play the gap, the left gap or the <laughs> or the right hand gap where the where the breaking line is? He went, oh wow, wow, he's he's lucky. I think he's okay. But oh, that's very careless. Just had to avoid the yellows either way, whichever way he decided to go. Can just get through, but shouldn't have been going anywhere near that yellow. You can see just a slight tremble in the key there. Feeling oh, a little bit. Go too far here as well. <laughs> Blimey. I mean, you just got to see the, see the eight ball. You don't need to try and get too cute on it. But anyway, he creates some drama for us, hey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gives, gives us something to talk about. 
Yeah, I think that's the difference, isn't it? Like, Sean's played out here so much, just looks so much more confident. Brian's got two frames on the board, which looks a little bit nervous in both of them. Just That's quite a big gap there. Or you can just drift back to where the, the balls are racked. Either way, it's just... You just need to be able to see the red, so... Yeah, it feels like the safer option might just have been to get back into the racky area. You didn't really need to get too close. So a bit, a bit for th Sean to think about. Although, even though he's 2-1 down, I don't think he'll be too despondent about this because his opponent's not exactly looking completely settled yet. It's amazing how quick somebody can settle, though, and just run away just from, just from getting Frame those four. couple of frames just to Brian calm the nerves a bit. Yeah, and playing to a... 40 minute match clock as well so <coughs> first to seven or if we get to 40 minutes the scores will be whatever they are at that point i'd be amazed if this match didn't finish with sean chipperfield playing but <laughs> you never know i guess some some situations a frame can take a while that's a great break it really is a great break that's two in a row he's hit perfectly left himself a fantastic opportunity here yeah caught those really well See him standing up to get more pace into the ball. Just the one yellow along the cushion, but that's probably probably going to be his last ball for the eight ball. So it's just mapping your route back to there. Yeah, and the nice thing is, because it's a very open area around it, there's no reds to get in his way. So once he's dealt with the balls at the top of the table, he's got plenty of space to work with. I would have liked to have gotten rid of that, that yellow by the middle pocket earlier because that, that, potentially, that, that could potentially end up being his last ball and the one along the cushion is second last ball the way he's gone here but I personally I think would have liked to get rid of that ball and then the pattern was a bit easier to Yeah I agree with you that one looks very easy over the middle pocket I mean I think it will actually be okay the way he's going but it could actually be one of the more difficult balls on the table even though it's an easy pot just to get position onto the last ball. I think he's going to the cushion now and then, but then it just means he's got to hit hit it that bit harder. He's got to, oh, I see. Oh. Just, just puts yourself under a bit of pressure. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the pot itself there, was it? It was just he was thinking about position. Because he now he knows he had to get back for that yellow over the middle, whereas if he leaves the, the ball along the cushion until last, you know you're just dropping it in. You don't have to do anything with it. Pocket weight, the pocket will play big. Whereas he was still having to do something there. Yeah, it ended up looking a bit silly. That was a simple ball that got missed. You see the authority Sean hits the balls with. I mean, it just crunches them in. You see very few people hit the ball as firm as he does. Yeah, beautiful to watch. Such a solid strike of the ball. I think they say it about Stephen Maguire in the snooker, don't they? You can hear him when he's on the table. You can hear the ball crunching the back of the pocket. It's kind of like that with Sean. Yeah, there's no better sound, is there, when you hear the balls hitting the back. It's just about OK. A little bit awkward. Could have just... It's just being hampered that makes this awkward, because if he could get to the bottom of the cue ball comfortably, he could play a cannon, but... Uh, it's a little bit harder to control bridging over. He's played that well. Very well. Yeah, that's a lovely strike of the ball. So back in prime position now. Yeah, he'd be delighted to be back for this visit. When he saw where those yellow balls are, he kind of thought he'd be playing any part in this frame. So, not exactly how you'd have imagined those four frames playing out, but it is two apiece. See the see the timekeeper winding him up there, he had a little beef. <laughs> Sean's thinking of definitely not taking 30 seconds there anyway. <laughs> no, and it really helps. The, the fact he's such a quick player, he's never really under any time pressure. As we see again, Brian Halcrow's miss. It's interesting you say that because that is a thing, you know, some, sometimes when I'm playing I'll, I'll hear the beeps and it just annoys me even just thinking, well, did I take 25 seconds on that shot, you know, whereas he's never hearing the beeps really, is he? So it's, it's like he's just, just on a normal table, but when you are regularly, regularly, I mean, at 15 seconds you'll hear it regardless, but... Um, yeah, 15 second shot clock for the last 10 minutes of the match. It's just when you see those numbers starting to count down behind you, like however composed you are, the, the beeping in your ear, it's very hard to 
completely block it out. It's just hard hard to put a smooth delivery in because you are distracted by the beeps, so it does it does potentially lead to putting a quick one in. Well he's putting a crunching delivery there with that break. He wasn't happy. You see his face. He wasn't happy with the contact. The cue ball did go quite close to the right middle, but he just hits them so hard anyway. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Sometimes you don't hit the break perfectly and you get a better outcome. It's just come slightly across the front ball there. Didn't catch it quite head on. But the yellows are a lot easier here, but the first shot wasn't. So he's decided to go reds. We can see the pattern. And he's found a good one, to be fair. So these are now pretty much just drop-ins from here, even though they look tricky. The white won't be doing too much. Yeah, the difficult ball on the left-hand side, Kishin, because he can leave that to last for the black. Same scenario as the last frame, isn't it? That ball becomes easy because all he's got to do is drop it in, whereas I think Brian maybe missed a trick there. With his, his finish. Absolutely perfect. Just wanted the key ball somewhere over near the side cushion. In no time at all. Sean Chipfield has steamed through this frame. And that's what he's capable of when he's playing at his best. Those big crunching breaks and then frame. rarely ever seems to miss afterwards. <laughs> he's having a bit of a joke with somebody. Sh Sean does... Um, does wear his heart on his sleeve, but you can tell when he's behind, you can tell when he's in front, so. Yeah, that's what we like to see from the commentary box, it makes it easier to understand what's going on. It does, he's not one of those with a poker face, but sometimes it's good to let it out, I think. And whoever gets through this match is gonna have a tough next match. We saw our fan dad come through 6-5 against Jake McCartney with barely two seconds left on the time clock as he potted the final eight ball. That was a fantastic match. Jake did, he will be disappointed with the shot he played when he was 5-3 in front. Uh, he'd done all the work in the frame off and had gone in off on the break and uh, Jake was perfect on his last red, just had to screw up he had the whole top half of the table to land in and just Brian landed way break. short. So, And that turned the match three off and took two. out some really good finishes from there. Yeah, Jake took it in good spirits as he always does, but inside must be devastated with that loss. Do you think this is the, I keep hearing the pool gods. <laughs> I kept hearing that yesterday. Do you think this is a bit of that? Brian's had a couple of really good chances. And yeah. He's been kicked in. I mean, you'd have to say you don't often get as many good opportunities early on in a match as, well, really, as both of them have ended up having. Brian definitely could be three or four frames up by now. I think we'll wait long for uh, for this frame to finish. Has he just landed a bit straight there, though, as I say that? Yeah, I mean, it's a quick cloth. He may just be able to force an angle. but yeah, This will be hit hard. <laughs> Very nice. Made it look easy. That's amazing, isn't it? That was virtually straight. And look at the angle he's managed to generate. Just such effortless cue power. Never looks like he's having to hit it hard, but gets through it beautifully. That's definitely his comfort zone, as I say. He's hitting it hitting the ball harder than most people for, for most shots. It's just the way he sees the game. So those cut shots come very naturally to him and maybe not as naturally to other players who are play, play shots a bit softer. It's going to leave a little bit of a tester of a, an eight ball here. He's <laughs> not happy about something. I think he's just got to drop this in and, and leave, a, leave a thin cut on the eight ball to the bottom right. That's fine. I think he might have been laughing at the fact he tripped himself over as oh, he was walking around the table. I missed that. <laughs> no, I didn't see. I thought he was fine. I don't know what he was laughing at. The, the, the legs on this particular table come straight down, so I see a lot of people banging their cue and walking into into it, whereas the, the supreme winner, which is a more common table than this, the legs actually come in a bit to give you a bit more room, so you can, you can be a bit lazier and cut the corner easier. <laughs> Players aren't used to having a bit of wood there, so I've seen plenty of um, bumps and knocks around around these legs. Well, I think you'll be happy that that was the only mistake you made in that frame, because on the table it was <laughs> pretty tidy stuff yet again. So starting to see the kind of form we expect from Sean. The 
quick first visit clearances. And a pretty big frame, this. Frames. If he could get 5-2 up, he wouldn't really see any way back for Two, Brian. So a lot riding on this one. That's a great break. Great break. Yeah, he's going to be a real force in this tournament if he keeps breaking like this. Great slow-mo as well. You see no spin on the cue ball whatsoever. He's, he's absolutely middled it. Yeah, and he's got such a good potting game that really the break is often the only thing that can ever hold him back. He's breaking well. He's really hard to handle. I think he might be playing a double here for a shot. Not yeah. sure if it goes directly. Oh, soft, soft bounce there. It's unusual for this table. Normally it's doubling quite square. That yeah. seemed to go soft. You could see it. Just throw wide. Yeah, it's a bit unlucky not to have an easier opening shot after that break. Brian really needs to take this chance. That's kind of done the hard work for Reds now, that first shot. Yeah, this is an absolutely crucial frame for Brian. Oh, cue ball. I've got the pace, but Red that's perfect. That's a great shot. That's a great shot. If you can just drift this one now down for the for the Red at the bottom and then right middle after that. So that's your next three shots. Right middle, bottom left, and then right middle. Oh, is it? Just about going to... He's gone too far, I think. It's close. Yeah, it's very tight. That is a very fast table. I mean, that just kept on rolling. And you see, he has gone too far. Yeah, he won't have had much experience, as we were saying, playing out here. And it, this table does play a bit faster than the ones in the rest of the venue. Just trying to block a couple of yellows. I think he's made it a nuisance anyway. It's not easy for Sean to take it off the table from this shot. I don't, I'm sure he's trying to think of a way of either. One of the two yellows on the, the right-hand side of that red that's over the pocket could, could potentially go in and bump it out the way if he can get there. That's what he's looking at. You'd prefer to play this from the bottom one, but he's a bit thin. Yeah, as you say, that was the better angle to come in at, but just a bit thinner, so harder to control the shot. He's done the... He's got more balls on the table here, so he's got the safety advantage. He's moved that red away from the pocket, so you might see him slow down here. Yellows are a bit tricky to clear up. Yeah, they don't link up brilliantly now, so that probably would be the sensible option. That was a safety. Yeah, and he's played that pretty well, because there wasn't a huge margin for error to not leave a shot to <coughs> either of the Reds. good shot from Brian if this yellow hadn't just popped out I think it has popped out yeah it's just come far enough hasn't it yeah for a moment it looked like he judged that really well you could only see the thin edge of the red so wasn't much he could do but he b bumped the yellow into a, a tougher place but unfortunately for him he's oh, sure he's left him at an actual angle here that's a that's a very poor shot he wanted to wait one more just because that yellow was tricky on the cushion but he had the perfect angle there to just pot the yellow, develop the other one and, and, and back himself, but he's sort of put the brakes on here and I think this is a real natural shot for Brian to develop these. How's your luck? Oh, not very good. I think that's gone as bad as it could have gone. Yeah, for a second it landed nicely in front of the pocket and then it's just gone back towards the yellow again. If he gets the cue ball right over onto the left-hand side, can he see enough for this red? I think so. 
the cue ball being that fraction smaller, it's hard to get there anyway. But I think he would have been able to pull it from there, potentially. I don't know if he could get very close to the eight ball. But well, it's still a bit for Sean to do, but he'd be very pleased to be back at the table. We'll be drawing a lot of confidence from these missed opportunities. Given that he waited last time, I think he might be waiting again now. Yeah, just electing to tidy things up. Now Brian's in a real bit of trouble because that red is very well locked up. So there's a world of pain. If I could hit the red thick enough to that right mode, I'd be playing this because you can only see the top right hand side of the cue ball. Then there's potential for three cushions and back into this red, but it's I, th I think it's too thin anyway. But if you could catch it thick, he's thinking defensive for now. I just think he had to go really. I don't think he's going to get a better chance. No, I mean, what are you really being defensive? It wasn't like he was ever going to get ball in hand from that position. So. I don't know how many people have that shot in the locker there with a lot of whether it was even on, but if you played that with buckets of right hand side and just missed the top top right hand corner jaws, you could it would it would spin round and the white would definitely head towards that bottom left corner. Well, getting into the last chance saloon for Brian in this frame. If he doesn't make something happen soon. <coughs> Is there a little safety here to leave the the white jammed in those two yellows and take this one off the table? Oh, he's just, well... Loss of turn. Not sure about that. Yeah, I don't think against a player of Sean's class, that's he could have enough. He could have played it thinner and, and put the cue ball where these two yellows are and just try to not leave anything. And Sean well, would have been in trouble. Especially if the bottom one go. Wow, I can't believe he's played that, Sean. He definitely had room to manufacture something there. And put the white somewhere safe at least. Yeah, I can understand if he didn't leave any of the balls at this end of the table and was leaving awkward queuing for the one at the top, but just left him on one of the more difficult ones. I say, looking quite an easy morning's work so far for Sean. The stand is a bit of a funny angle. He's going to have to do something. I hit this quite firm. Try to straighten it up. Oh, he's had a little bit of luck there. Yeah, that's a good touch, isn't it? That was kind of one of those angles where whatever you do, you're heading towards the eight ball. So try to try to just miss it. Fine. Yeah, won't mind that at all. Landing straight to the middle. So no, not looking entirely happy, but he'll be <laughs> pretty happy with the scoreline when he turns around and looks at the scoreboard. Five two up. And it's hard, particularly with the the match clock as well for, for Brian to get back into this. I mean, there is enough time to win three frames, but he's going to have to tighten up significantly on how he's been playing so far. He'll be really disappointed with his performance, knowing, knowing Brian, you know, this isn't, he's a lot much better player than he's shown so far today. Yeah, and he had, I mean, he had a good start and it could have gone 2-0 up and it could have been a very different game at that point. I think that rest incident's probably really thrown him because you think you can't really, I mean, it's almost a given frame the way the yellows were there and it's just a shame what happened frame really. Eight. I think that's probably unsettled right, him. Yeah, and it's tough because you, you never get as easy an opportunity again. That, that was kind of the easiest one that he's had so far. He's been breaking well in the rest of the match. He's really <laughs> just let that one go, hasn't he? Really not controlled the cue ball, but it's going to be rewarded with a decent chance. Just, just the eight ball to develop, but there's Plenty of yellows to develop that with, I think. Yeah, but if you just look at the where the table's finished afterwards, you'd think he'd broken really well, but he's almost caught the front ball half ball. He's so far off straight. Just he just lost his um, his stance a bit there. Just his body went before the cue went, <laughs> and uh, didn't hit anywhere near the middle of the cue ball. Yellow balls in play. Still, he's a real fighter. As you were saying he came from seven five down to beat Chris Day in the qualifying round for today 12 minutes is enough to win three frames this is a crucial frame though because if he wants to lose this one the match would effectively be over so here's your developing shot 
I would have been trying to get into this position from the first shot while you still had a yellow over the, the bottom right as, a, as another ball to land on. So he's got most likely to land on the ball to the top left, but then it's still not easy getting out from there. He'd love to land on the ball on the left-hand side now, this bottom left corner after after this shot. So develop the blackout, just top through. And this works a bit easier then. He's, he's, in, he's in a tricky spot now with the... Didn't hit that hard enough for me. Yeah, I was trying to just be delicate with it and control it, but he's now left himself in a bit of trouble. It's a good shot, very good shot. I don't know if he can avoid this red that's nearest the cue ball, whether he can come on the underside of it, which you would like to do, but I think he's probably just got to go above it near the bulk line and take your medicine. That's a great shot. <coughs> yeah, that's a really good positional shot. I think the eight ball goes to the middle, right middle here. It's probably his best bet. I don't think he'd want to be punching it across for the bottom left. It goes to either pocket, so it's just preference. He's got a bit more angle than I thought. That was fine. I thought it was a bit straighter than that. And this is exactly what he needed, having slipped 5-2 down. Not the best hit break, but a, a good outcome of break, and he's taking these balls nicely. He took those really well. They weren't, they weren't as... He's actually made them look pretty easy, to be fair. They weren't They weren't that easy, so... Um, that, should, that should settle him down, and he's still in the match. Plenty of time. I think we're getting to seven regardless here, so... Been a good player for a long time. Reached the semi-finals of the World Championship in 2004. He also famously in that tournament recorded the only ever whitewash to that point in the tournament's history. He beat Francis Cedric Seberville 9-0. So back in the day, he was a dominant player. Got up as high as number eight in the world rankings on the back of that. Sean Chipperfield. Came through the ranks a little bit later than that. Five years now since his World Championship triumph. Leading five frames to three. We're about to hit the 15 second shot clock. Probably within one or two shots of this visit. So here's where the carnage may begin. Yeah, and I'm interested to see how Brian copes with this because this is going to be very unfamiliar territory. Playing to a 30 second shot clock isn't so unusual, but. There's not many times in life you're playing to a 15-second shot clock. I mean, he's hit that break fantastically well, hasn't he? It's really controlled the cue ball. That's a very unlucky dry break. Yeah, I mean, that's the irony, isn't it? Because we were saying after his last break that he hadn't quite hit it perfectly and the ball split beautifully, whereas that time hit it much better. Good open yeah, shot from Brian. Brian. He's still got Can he play this off the red play. on the right-hand side here? That opens up the other yellow. That yellow doesn't go otherwise, I don't think, so he's got to do something. And he hasn't got much time to deal with it, so I think maybe it does go then, because he's playing this directly from what I can see. And maybe the overhead shows it probably does just sneak past that red anyway. So before Brian played that shot, you heard the referee announce the 15 second shot clock. Sean's playing the pot the two balls here, the yellow over the right hand corner's going as well. Or trying to. Just a little bit too much, uh, too low on the cue ball there. I'd always err on trying to hit the hit the cushion and spin it across, but he didn't hit the cushion at all. Regardless, doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the quality, isn't it, where you can pot like that. Still got one more problem to deal, well, two more problems to deal with, the red by the eight ball and the red on this cushion next to the yellow. Both of those are very tricky balls. It'll be interesting to see how he deals with them. Might have landed perfectly on a double here if he doesn't want to develop it. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Like, sometimes you are better just playing the double. I mean, got angles to get into it, but is it worth the risk? He's developing the one with the eight ball first, is he? Few choices land in the perfect spot, really. He's got so many options from here. He's thought through all of them. <laughs> I think this is the right thing. No point moving that if you don't need to. 
not landed great here though. I think you wanted does this go? Is this red surely it doesn't go between the wow it does go. Oh wow. Oh, what a shot that was if it does. If he's landed in that gap. Oh was a foul. Well, I didn't think it went. <laughs> well Brian, what a chance now. I think he maybe play the skill shot first shot here, get the red off the table, opens the pocket for the eight ball. Oh, yeah, he's doing it. This is the right shot for me. Great shot. Wind you the frame if you uh Yeah, it's good thinking from Brian. I haven't got long to think about that. That wasn't really the way Sean was intending to go, but I think he just landed on that gap and just suddenly thought, oh, maybe I could find a way through. But it was a very tight gap he had to get through. I think he tried to spin through it as well, you know. <laughs> I don't think it was a plain ball shot. No, you could see him lining up with right-hand side, which made it even harder to judge. That is one of those that only happens on the shot clock, I think. I mean, he didn't land on a good, good angle to break it out, so... It's it's definitely his intention, like you say, was to open it up from one of the other balls, but he didn't want to leave it as his last ball, which was the only other choice he had. But he's gifted this frame. Obviously, Brian had to play a good skill shot first shot and had to see that, which just opened everything up. Fair play to Brian Halker at 5-2 down. He didn't really look like he was in this match, but 5-4, and it's a very different game. And he'll be pleased with this. You, you hype yourself up so much for occasions like this, particularly when they don't come round that often. That it's nice to see both players at least give a good account of themselves. It's obviously tough for whoever doesn't get through. He's a fighter, as I say. It's been early, early doors. It's been a disappointing performance. He's had a good, good last couple of frames, to be fair. Like um, took them both out in one visit. So yeah, he's one of those players that never knows when he's beaten. I mean, he obviously doesn't want to be behind, but I think you know, some players are almost better when they are behind. That's kind of their natural territory, like sort of clawing their way into a match. It does take the pressure off sometimes. That's how you are where the match has kind of gone now, and now it's a let your arm loose. But the pressure is well and truly back on now. He's in the match. Six minutes to go, one frame behind. <laughs> because, he's, because he hit the last prick so bad, he took a bit off there, but still they've... Uh, if he can see a red, he'd love to, but I don't think he can. And the yellows are, well, the yellows are very tricky. I don't think he can pot a red from here. He has a much more controlled break than last time. I think you just got to try and okay, find a ball. safety. I, I don't think you can start potting yellows particularly. Maybe the three at the bottom have got a, got a path, but... Yeah, he's got to get on with this. Good luck. Oh, he's not even the other ball's in he's play. Got, got maybe a safety option here, though. Yeah, she wasn't far away from that shot coming off, given how quickly he played it, but just missed the cannon. He's kind of felt forced into potting a yellow there, I guess, but oh, he just feels forced into going for them still. Quite. I can't believe he's not just committed oh. to a safety shot there. I think that was the, the beeps in the background, wasn't it? You could just hear it. Just the thought, I've got to play something. He could have had Sean in a bit of trouble there if he just kind of rolled him up to one of those yellows. Yeah, it didn't look the most difficult safety shot from that position. He had a nice cluster of yellows. Still, we'd rather go out attacking, I guess, if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna go out. Very unlucky off his break, not to be able to see a red ball. Not one that potted anyway. Yeah, you always feel a bit hard done by it. It's not like a great example of Sean just thumping balls in. Just keys the ball so smoothly. I mean, he could have rolled that in. Wouldn't have made any difference. But he just, just that's his natural way. He's gone a bit far here. Little tester to the probably to the top left. Cannon on the yellow, maybe. I think. Well, maybe, maybe he can soft. <laughs> See, I would play this soft and just just drift past the yellow. But he probably wants to hit it firmer. And he's wanting to look for a cannon. There's no need to play a cannon here. But great shot. Yeah, that's nice, especially under the time pressure he was under. Does the black go to the left centre? So I might want to just, no, I just played it that way. Yeah, just showing you can play the more delicate shots as well. He definitely can, he just doesn't often choose to. No. <laughs> 
was a great shot to the top left, to be fair. He judged the cannon perfectly. Very good finish. Frame. Yeah, in a much more comfortable position now. 6-4 up with 3 minutes 46 left on the match clock. There's also an element of pride in performance. Like Sometimes you just want to get through your first match, but you also want to set out your stall for the rest of the tournament. So we see again that safety shot, a little bit heavy hand. Well, not a safety shot, or not the one we were advocating at least. No, he definitely tried to make a ball in, in there with that shot. But I mean, what he did do and what, what you can do in these rules is, is just try and mess the table up a bit, you know. And, that, and but I mean, all the Reds are in such nice position before he played that shot and he did actually make Sean work for it. 11 frame. So it nearly, it nearly came off. Sean had to play some really good shots to take those out. Leading six frames to four. Oh, crunching break. Wow. Oh, this break has been really impressive in the match. He's <laughs> a bit unlucky again here, is he? Has he got a first shot? Hit those fantastic. Yeah, if that cue ball ends up anywhere near the middle of the table, it's so straightforward, but it's just gone into a slightly tricky position. Just the safety coming up. Going to burn through the whole 30 seconds with his extension. Yeah, I was going to say, if when you're two frames ahead, you don't really mind getting into a safety battle. Brian's got to make something happen. They <laughs> literally left it to one second to go. Fair play. You don't see many people go that far. <laughs> no, play it on the last beat. Shows you his concept of time. He's very comfortable out there. That must have felt like an eternity for Sean, having to wait 30 seconds to play, yes. <laughs> to play a basic <laughs> safety shot. Almost feels bad about doing it. <laughs> you see that a few times. John, John Rowe a couple of times in his match yesterday when he was burning through it, almost looked a bit, burning through the time, almost looked a bit embarrassed to be playing slowly. You could hear Gareth Potts during the, uh, the shootout, though. He said he was trying to run the clock down. He was a couple of frames ahead with about seven minutes left. And with the 15-second shot clock, there's just no point, I think. I mean, here there is a case for it because you're, you're two up with... But some people try and run the clock down a bit too early, I think. Sometimes it's better to just get on with it and, and not lose your own natural rhythm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, six, four up, he's only got to win the frame and then that's also the match done. No point playing a different game suddenly. It's a good shot. Brian's got to go here. He's got to have a go. There's a plant to the left middle, two yellows. There's quite a gap and it's quite offline, but there is a plant and it will nudge the other two yellows. Yeah, he's, he's seen it. I mean, he just hasn't got really enough time to line these up where he's going to be relying. If he does win the frame on a golden break, he won't have time to play the next frame out. He played the plant, it's just high, and that will probably be that. Yeah, he's not really playing like a man that's under time pressure, is he? As you say, he's not going not to have time to get two frames in there. So Sean's not going to rush into anything here, he just wants to keep potting balls. For he will probably finish these. I mean, he might just get on with it now because he'll fancy he'll fancy taking these out. He might not he might not take the full 15 seconds a shot. And it's still an open table, of course, after all of that. So, sure, we're opting for the yellows. Been a very good performance. That that finish from you know, I know we emphasised it at the time, but five four. Given what had happened as well with. Brian taking two finishes out. Uh, he was under a lot of pressure there and, and he uh, played a few shots that could find find you out under pressure. He, he uh, passed with flying colours, so. Yeah, he's given a good account of himself. It's gonna be scant consolation when he goes on to lose this match, but he still takes some positives from the day. And Sean, I think, has got a lot to feel positive about. He's, he's done what he needed to. Well, he's straight back on now, so Sean against our fan. Yeah, and that's going to be a very entertaining match. I think Sean will, he's settled in with the team. <laughs> nice way to finish. Yeah, playing a bit of exhibition stuff to end the match. That way, but <laughs> <laughs> so, warm handshake between the players. Sean Chipperfield prevailing by seven frames to four.